Hey guys, welcome to Electronics. I'm Gregory and I'm very excited today because we're gonna start a series on development of a GPS disciplined oscillator. This is so nice, guys. Today on part one, we're gonna see the block diagram and the working principle of a GPS disciplined oscillator. In the next part, we're gonna start building and testing this circuit. Let's go. So guys, this is the basic block diagram of a GPS disciplined oscillator. And it looks like a PLL, but it's not the same and we have some big difference here from a PLL that you're gonna understand now. So basically, we have the GPS, that's a normal GPS receiver that will sync its internal clock with the satellite clock. The reason we use GPS is because on the kernel of the GPS you have very precise oscillators, frequency reference. Using time difference is that GPS computes the distance from the satellites to trilaterate the position on the global. So the GPS has an internal clock that's very stable and is synced with a global frequency reference. Our main goal here with this kind of topology is to sync the phase and the frequency of an oven oscillator with the internal clock of the GPS. The most common GPS devices outputs a 1 PPS signal. What's a 1 PPS signal? It's a 1 pulse per second. So, on the output of the GPS receiver, we have a 1 pulse per second signal. Each second, this pulse toggles from low to high. So each second, we have a synchronized pulse here that's synced with the global frequency reference that's very precise. This uh, signal is what our DSP will use to control the oven to get the phase locked and have a very high frequency stability and a very precise frequency on the output. This looks like a PLL because you have a phase detector in the loop that controls a VCO basically. The oven is a crystal oscillator that is very stable because it uses an oven to heat and maintain a constant temperature. So temperature changes and temperature gradients from the outside world will not change the frequency of the crystal oscillator. The oven has an internal closed loop that we can draw here. That's basically a heater device. It's like a resistor or in this case probably is a MOSFET or a BGT device. And you have a temperature sensor here and have a PI controller probably here. PI controller that controls the heater to maintain a constant temperature here. The constant temperature of the crystal oscillator gives us short time stability and we need to extend this period. For this we use the 1 PPS source from the GPS and close a loop around the oven controlling in small changes the phase of the oven oscillator, of the crystal oscillator, to maintain a long term stability using the GPS as a reference. The main difference we can see here on a GPS disciplined oscillator from a PLL is that they have a DSP block on the center between the phase detector and the oscillator. On a PLL here we would have a filter, a basic, a basic filter, a PI filter, a second order filter that would control the voltage of the voltage controlled oscillator to close the loop and maintain the phase uh, here on the input. But this is the difference from a disciplined oscillator. In a disciplined oscillator, we have more complex algorithms that you try to control the crystal to lock its phase with the one pulse per second. And why this? We need some more complex algorithms here because one PPS in reference to 10 meg is a very long distance. In a period of one second, we have 10 million cycles of the crystal oscillator. So we cannot try to lock the phase because we make only one phase measure per second. This is a very slow loop. So we don't try to lock the phase precisely and instantaneous 
with the oven oscillator. We slowly look to the differences in phase using the DSP algorithms and try to adjust slowly the voltage of the crystal oscillator to lock the phase. But we try to do it in a smarter way, not in, in, in a precisely closed loop, a linear way. We make algorithms that are non-linear. We can have a coarse phase uh, uh, of adjust where we use feed forward control. So in a classical forward loop controller, we can measure the difference in phase, calculate the precise voltage and apply this voltage. With this forward controller, we coarse adjust the frequency and phase to the GPS. Now we can switch to a fine adjust where you have something more like a PLL, a phase locking loop. With the DSP, we can even use some sensors to measure the temperature of the outside world, the humidity, and use these parameters to predict the oven characteristics and have a more precise controller. Other big problem that the DSP need to solve is that these GPS modules here are not meant to that. So we have a lot of jitter here. With the DSP, we can make some low pass filtering and would increase the performance of this controller loop. So this is the basic block diagram. On the output, we're gonna have the 10 meg signal that is precisely locked to the global reference and the global frequency reference we have on the GPS system. This is the part one of this series. In the part two, we're gonna start making the oven oscillator. I wanna make an oven oscillator. I know this is, the, this is not the best approach. We could buy a, a very precise and, and calibrated oven oscillator, but I think we can learn a lot making our own oven oscillator from scratch using crystals. We can measure the crystal stability with the equipment here on the bench. We can turn on the oven and see if we get better results and a better frequency and phase stability of the crystal oscillator. I think we're gonna use a Copitz, very classical oscillator, simple oscillator, tuned by a diode varactor. And after we have the oscillator, the ovenized oscillator working, we're gonna start the DSP on FPGA. So here we're gonna use a FPGA, a Xilinx one, I think. This is the FPGA you're gonna use. And I need to buy a GPS module so we can lock to the GPS system and get our one PPS signal. And the phase detector in reality will be implemented inside the DSP. So the FPGA is out all these blocks here. Phase detector DSP inside the FPGA. And we have another challenge here that we need to generate a precise uh, DC voltage here, okay? And probably we're gonna use some kind of PWM deck or Delta Sigma converter here uh, implemented inside the FPGA. You can see clicking in this balloon, the video I make about PWM decks and how we can improve them. So I think it's gonna be very nice, a project, very nice, a very nice series for me, for you, and we're gonna learn a lot together. Thank you. If you, if you like this video, please give a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. See you in the part two of our GPS Disciplined Oscillator. See you next time.